Hello and welcome back to another War Tales guide. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the class guides where I'm going through each of the guides in a 10 minutes no BS comprised, very information dense guide to how to build the class. Today's class is going to be the Brute. The Brute is a variable class just like the Swordsman and can either go into the tank route or into the DPS route. I personally prefer my Brutes as tanks because they are the best tanks in the game without a shadow of a doubt, but others might differ and the game itself doesn't really force you into specific roles, specifically if you have multiple characters you can uh, build various viable builds. So. With regards to the class itself, if uh, you want to go with a tank build, you do have two options. You can either go destroyer or brawler. We will today focus on the destroyer build, not only because it is the uh, only unlocked build at the beginning, um, if uh, you haven't uh, played through the game and get uh, brawler yet as, an, as the specific fourth quote unquote secret unlockable uh, way, but also because I think it is the, uh, the stronger of the both uh, builds. Let's start with the tank version. You want to have heavy armor, as mentioned in the sword uh, man's build already. Heavy armor is vital for a tank. Armor will constitute for the majority of your effective hit points in the end game. An end game uh, character has around 200 to 300 hit points and will run around with 600 to 700 armor, maybe even north of that. Uh, multiply that by guard, which is the mechanic that uh, if you're wearing a shield or armor, uh, that's a percentage of the damage that will be deducted as long as you do have armor. You can get armor uh, or guard up to 80, maybe even more percent in the endgame with optimized gear. And that will lend you a solid three to 4,000 uh, effective hit points just because you are wearing heavy armor. So there is absolutely no doubt that you would want to go down that route if you want a tank. Weakening Blow is so absolutely fantastic for a tank because it fills multiple roles for the Brute. Number one, it weakens the enemy, which automatically reduces the damage by 50%. All of the percentages stack with one another so it is not seldom that you're seeing glancing blows of one damage um, coming through so weakening blow itself is great but it also synergizes very well with other abilities that the brute is having uh, weakening blow in the upgraded uh, version also crits uh, if uh, you have other debuffs going now, with regards to the role of uh, the tank, I personally play tanks as Valor generators, meaning they should be net positive in, in their interaction with enemies. And the way to go about it is Valorous Duel. There is, in my mind, no other way of playing tanks. Whenever you're engaging in combat, you're getting one Valor. Further down the road in the game, uh, you will see the level 10 ability will allow you to uh, to disengage frequently. We'll come to that in a second. And the idea of a playstyle of a tank is you engage, get Valor, do something meaningful, then disengage, maybe even uh, attack as an, an, uh, on your side instead of receiving an attack of opportunity and then continuing to engage, disengage, engage, disengage. That's really the core style of uh, the, uh, the uh, build. As for the level five abilities, opportunism is absolutely the way to go. Um, as long as there are two enemies within six meters, which is a quite large area, you get protection, which is a 30% uh, 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 buff uh, or damage reduction, mind you, that stacks together with weakening and even applies if enemies are taking you from the side or behind. The upgraded version of that also gives you repost as soon as there are four enemies within uh, that square, which is absolutely fantastic. So you, per definition, if you're running into the fray, you will always fight back, which is just great. For the level eight ability, I personally favor temperance. It's a very strong uh, ability. After taking two attacks, the unit gets deflection, which means every second attack you gain another 70%. Do the math, you have 50%, then another 30%, then another 70%. So we're nearing the 90, 95% damage reduction. And the upgraded version gives you repost every second attack as well. So you do have repost with that, you have repost with that, um, which per definition means you're oftentimes hitting back and can really punish the enemy hard. 
On top of that, you do have defensive repost, which is a 50% chance. I talked about the level 10. It's a 50% chance of not taking an attack of opportunity, but instead giving an attack of opportunity. And that really allows you to engage and disengage. I was not uh, convinced with the level 12 ability. The knockback um, is nice, but not worth a while. Uh, the um, quite substantial uh, opportunity cost. Keep in mind, bravery, you can only have one. Swordsman bravery is better. Archer's bravery is better. Ranger's bravery is, uh, is better. So in that case, we're just using an extra uh, class specialization. And there are a couple of ways of going about it. You can either uh, go with more Valor generation uh, mechanisms. I personally always liked overwhelming uh, presence. Um, even for tanks, it's a passive that when you have more armor than the engaged opponent, you automatically land critical hits. Let that sink in for a second. Um, uh, the upgraded version of that also deals confusion. So let that sink in for a second. You will very likely have more armor than anyone in the game because you're the best tank. And that means you don't need to skill critical, um, uh, critical hit because you're, uh, well, I won't say that. Critical hit also improves the critical hit uh, value not only the chance but also the value but the point is you are maximizing uh, critical hit to a hundred percent against most of the enemies which is a phenomenal uh, interaction so ultra strong tank can take everything in in the game specifically in the first row as for stats very similar to the swordsman uh, and any melee fighter you want to have 15 willpower at least you want to go with 16 to 18 movement, 18 movement, and that's the kind of bare minimum where you want to be. These are the two important sets. Everything else is then up to you. If you want to go with critical hit, which is kind of uh, the meta at the moment, you would increase the uh, crit uh, values. I don't think that that is ultimately necessary. I would rather go with um, a bit more strength to have uh, base uh, the base values higher or even some constitution. So kind of a um, mixed uh, and very uh, balanced build. So that's the brute. We're going to look at the second build which is a damage focus brute. All right, the second build of the brute that I want to talk to, uh, to is the Smasher build, which is a medium armor build. It fills a very similar role than other AOE damage builds. So it is a Valor Sync. It will use a lot of uh, the Valor that you have been accumulating. Um, contrary to other uh, builds like the Executioner, uh, for instance, the Smasher, it requires a little bit of setup and you will see why. So first and foremost, um, uh, Smasher has an AOE effect, deals 17 damage to all units and applies poison uh, to bleeding units. So if you find a way of making units bleed, that is fantastic. On top of it, you're going to now poison them. That uh, synergizes incredibly well with poison assassins, uh, for instance, or anyone else that uh, works off of status effects. I like that um, in itself. Similar to other um, multi-attack builds, we're going Valorous Chain, so that whenever we're hitting multiple targets, we're gaining additional Valor. Now, here is the um, separation from the previous uh, build. Um, as we're going uh, deeper and deeper, instead of opportunism in this case, we're going with cruelty. Damage and critical hit is 20% uh, increased in, against units with at least one debuff. So the idea is that we're finding ways of debuffing them in advance. There are multiple or plenty ways of doing that. Once they are debuffed, uh, you can uh, ch jump in and actually in increase the damage even uh, further. The problem with any multi-attack uh, build is they need to go through guard and armor and you will see that a lot of the other skills that we're taking are trying to get through the defenses in order to maximize the alpha strike potential. So we're going with guard breaker. Attacks ignore 50% of the enemy guard. That is huge. Enemies uh, can have uh, between 30, 50, 60, sometimes even up to 80% of uh, uh, guard. And Guard is multiplicative, that means specifically on the higher end values, it really is going to shrink down your armor. Ignoring 50% of that, fantastic. If you attack on top of it from the back, you're ignoring 75% because it's multiplicatively so very, very good. 
Um, we're going with defensive repost, very same idea as always. Uh, once we are engaged, we want to get rid of that and it's always helpful to then attack. Um, I already mentioned Deafening Roar, not the biggest fan of it. Um, so we're going into class specialization and this time I would be suggesting Armor Breaker, which deals an additional 35% against armored uh, targets. So uh, really what that does is you will be squeeze, uh, squeezing through the armor super fast and get to that juicy, juicy health. So let's see how both of the builds are performing in combat. Which brings us to the gameplay section of the uh, Brute uh, class guide. We have uh, built, it, uh, built ourselves a smasher as uh, indicated. We're running a two-handed weapon. This is a level 11 version of uh, the build. In this case, we're using only crafted gear, Arcadian steel two-handed hammer and an Arcadian steel uh, medium plate. We're running infectious oil for more status effects as well as 100% trigger into that. So really basic stuff. I wanted to make sure that we're not over equipping ourselves uh, and we're uh, fighting against level 14 enemies. And in this gameplay footage, we do have a situation where there is a front line here um, and there is kind of a front line over here where we could clean up. Either way would uh, work fine. I just want to showcase a couple of options. Um, oftentimes, if you look at um, a uh, ability like uh, the um, Poisonous Smash or Poisonous Impact, you wonder, can I hit enough people? If you right click it, um, then you can see, depending on your position, it will highlight you uh, the enemy. So a little tip here um, that would tell me, for instance, if I move here, I can hit uh, both of these characters. It equally tells me that no matter how I position, unless I get behind these guys, I can't hit all three of them. So now it's really a question of do we want to be greedy um, or uh, do we want to play it safe? These guys have already acted. These guys will still act. Um, if I was to move in here, I could um, use the bleeding and poison the lieutenant on top. Uh, I could potentially also um, eradicate the tactician. If I want to maximize my damage, I would potentially go for the three over here. I will go for the safer option to just get rid of the tactician first and I will use uh, the uh, displayed uh, tactic of moving exactly to here using the alpha strike potential of hitting both. You can see it applies uh, a lot of poison and additional debuffs. This guy will take not only 20% hit point, but also um, 68 bleeding damage. On top of which we can uh, continue with nicely finishing this guy. Beautiful hammer to the face. You can see 150 points of damage, nothing to scarf it. Uh, we do have uh, Wrath, but no target in range. And really, uh, since we have already gotten our Valor points for hitting two, uh, what we're going to do is we're moving over here and we're reinforcing the other uh, side of uh, the battlefield by moving to here and setting ourselves up for next turn. And we're off to the last part of the Brood Guide. This time our Brood is a destroyer tank and I wanted to showcase how that works. Very similar to the Swordsman tank. We do have a nice little front line up here. I will put myself just in the way of the Sphalanx Soldier. We're starting in this case <coughs> with a weakening. The engagement cost one but also gives us uh, one Valor point back. And you can see, although we're taking hits and we're not succe uh, uh, successful, there is a 50% chance of uh, hitting. The weakening blow based on the previous taunt is dealing additional damage, cr automatically crit. Another automatic crit because we have more armor than uh, they do. And uh, there we go. The first victim uh, has already fallen. We're continuing our onslaught. And we're going right into the back line, trying to uh, be as annoying uh, for them as possible. And you can see even on the turn of uh, the enemy, they will flock towards the tank. 
and uh, the the enemies will engage we would uh, get even more valor if we wouldn't already be full and that sets us up very nicely so best tank in the game we haven't really lost a lot and we now have repost by uh, simply sitting in the middle of uh, the enemies so great tank all around i hope that was helpful that's the end of uh, the uh, mm, brute uh, mm, uh, guide for now if that uh, created value for you leave a comment and a like down uh, below let me know what kind of uh, brood you like to play and uh, even most importantly if you want to be a full-fledged tank try taunting that like button and tell me whether or not you have uh, made a successful impact thanks a lot and have a good one bye bye